a little bit of lo-fi for the one viewer. <laughs> Just waiting for everybody to join us. A little lo-fi magic for you guys on this Sunday evening. Thank you for everyone for joining. We're multi-streaming. Let's put up the music a little more. We're multi-streaming to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, X. Join us, join us. Thank you for joining us. All right, guys, welcome. A little bit of a mellow jam here there for us today. I'm stumbling already. We just started, but I'm just trying to set up a few things here for you guys. Let's make sure this is working. Boom. I think we're good. All righty. So let's jump in. Guys, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. Really, really appreciate you guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Hopefully everything's nice and clean. Let's see here. Make sure for some reason it's... Uh, playing a bit quiet on my end so that's why you can just let me know in the chat would really appreciate that thank you guys all for joining We've got a good show here for you guys tonight maybe we can adjust it like this that way maybe we'll hear things better all right guys we got a really good show tonight i, I got some stories prepped alex will not be joining us today maybe he's watching and having fun wet willie thank you very much sir really appreciate that really helps a ton because i'm not running a second screen here to, to see because it just creates all sorts of problems a lot easier just to ask you guys thank you very much i'm going to look at a few things usually i make videos about these monthly uh the lmi report we're going to look at the march 2024 logistics managers index we're always a month behind on these so we're going to review that for march good news and uh so you know everyone that says in the comments things are getting worse things no they're not you just got to zoom out a little bit things are actually getting better now for march what we did see is a bit of a slowdown in the improvement uh muhammad thank you so much sir really appreciate that glad you guys can hear me so let's uh let's definitely jump in uh people will join as we kind of cover cover some of the stuff that's uh that's going on here in the industry we'll jump in right away uh as always guys uh you know be aware it's a call-in show you guys are more welcome to call in numbers right there 801-448-6363 you can hit the extension three that'll come out here um and uh we'll we'll get you live on a call if you got questions you know this helps a ton uh, i get a lot of really good feedback from you guys saying that you know really helps when you guys call in have questions we can get those things covered because believe it or not those questions that you have are the very same questions that others have so a lot of people just you know they just don't have the gumption i guess to just call in or leave a message or whatnot or, or get into these details so a lot of these videos uh, get more views later after we get off the you know the live and so it, they are definitely helping a lot and as always guys we're a dispatch company lease on operations so if you guys our uh, trucking company have your own MC. We can work with you guys. If you are lease on owner operators, we can work with you as well. And we'll cover more of that in the uh, coming in. Let's for now. Let's kind of jump in. I think I'm going to do a bit of a shorter show. I'm, uh, I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, um, but I didn't want to skip out with you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide my 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 mug here in its entirety. That way you guys can get the entire screen. All right. So here's what we got, guys. Every month. LMI is released. It's the Logistics Managers Index for 2024. All right. So right now what we're doing is we're basically hitting the gas on growth. Things are improving. I've, I've done these videos every single month. Hello from Orange, Texas. Uh, James West, good to see you, sir. Hello from Salt Lake City. Thank you so much for stopping by weekly. Really appreciate it. It's going to be a good show, as I mentioned at the beginning. If anything, you just, you know, stop in to, uh, you know, rewind the video or whatnot. Now, what's, what's important here, let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see a little better. Okay, so the biggest companies come together, some of the biggest names in the industry come together and they analyze data. The, the report is humongous, okay? The report is humongous. As you can see, there's a lot here and this is updated every single month. This is the go-to place to get your free information on where the industry is going. It's looking at transportation costs, warehousing, inventories, all sorts of things. And this is what we're going to cover today, all right, because this is good news. It was good news, news the previous month and the previous month before that. In January, we saw some really good numbers that were reviewed in February. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So things are looking decent. So what truckers need to know for March 2024 going into April. So in April, we're reviewing March numbers. So fellow truckers, let's, let's kind of dive in, uh, in into this LMI report for March 2024. The, re the report basically tells us what's happening across the entire supply chain, which can impact your business big time. All right. So this, this is the report and this in its entirety is what I analyzed and I will kind of give you a breakdown and here are all the numbers and uh, all the charts and everything you guys are more than welcome to stop by here monthly take a look if even just look at the lmi figures and see if they're going up or down or which areas and where do we see improvement um you know uh, contraction growth etc cetera, etc cetera. so the report basically is telling us uh what's happening across the entire supply chain which can impact your business big time all right generally we're seeing overall growth ladies and gentlemen so the supply chain a couple of things i'm going to skip that i think are not going to be as relevant for truckers um, they're still important but i want to focus specifically on the transportation portion of the lmi for us that's the most important aspect okay so let me actually turn this on all right here we go so we'll we'll, we'll just uh, jump in and talk about this so guys uh one of the things that everyone always talks about i know there was a lot of confusion about this especially with the lmi they talk about a couple of things they talk about upstream and then they also mention downstream you guys will see it so if, for example if i run a search here and i'll put upstream what we're going to see is there's 41 mentions of upstream and if i if i do downstream there are 42 mentions of downstream. So this is a very, very important term. Both of those are very uh, important terms, but there is one more term that they don't tell you, and that's midstream. And that's where we are, trucking companies. Now, they, if we had to pick between upstream or downstream, we would be a downstream provider. So what it is is uh, upstream refers to the early stages of the supply chain. So we're talking about activities like raw material acquisition, manufacturing, parts, uh, initial processing, things like that. We have nothing to do with that, right? Downstream refers to the latter stages, closer to the end consumer, right? Uh, so, and that does include a lot of the last mile deliveries, things like that, and, and just generally deliveries also. That's why trucking is closer to downstream than upstream, all right? This involves activities like final assembly, packaging, distribution, you know, that's us, and retail sales, okay? And that stuff has to get to a retail location, has to come to a warehouse, has to come to other locations, so that we are more downstream. So trucking companies, as mentioned, are actually upstream. Trucking companies play a vital role in moving goods between these stages. They transport raw materials, parts, finished products throughout the supply chain. Since they're not directly involved in acquiring raw materials or delivering to the consumer, they fall under the midstream category, which you, I don't think you're gonna find that word here. Midstream, nope, no such word. So they don't even refer to it, but we are midstream. That's what we are, okay? So let's actually scroll to the top. Makes a lot more sense this way. Let me mute this, I gotta. I don't want to blow up your eardrums. So, the, so, so we are midstream. So why is this important? Well, it's good, good news for the grind. For every one of you guys who've been grinding out there trying to make that bread, it's, this is good news. The overall LMI score, it is up. Again, month to month is up, which means the logistics industry is growing. Now, what areas are growing, that might be up to debate. Okay, and we're going to cover that. Now, this translates to more freight on the road, potentially keeping you busy. Companies are also focusing on restocking. So think more inventory. There is more freight coming. Tex Williams, he made it. Howdy, howdy. Thank you so much for putting on this show this week. Hey, man, thank you so much for stopping by, man. You're such a joy. Uh, uh, guys, uh, Tex, if those of you guys have followed our channel, I, I seem to bring, him, bring up his name at least weekly. Uh, definitely, I wish we had more customers like Tex. Wish more of our customers, more of the people we come in contact to had that positive attitude because we all find ourselves in a crappy market. But the way that we react is certainly very, very different. And Tex, Tex, sir, you are a prime example of having the right attitude, doing things right, always positive. I'll, I'll leave it at that, guys. I'll leave it at that. You guys can sign up for his webinar. <laughs> and if not, Tex, you got to do a webinar. Teach people on how to have a positive attitude in uh in this crazy market so yeah guys more more inventory more freight this means more pickups more deliveries um all of this is going to benefit the trucking industry now 
the supply chain reaction, like the, the upstream downstream thing, this is where things uh, really break down. So just a heads up, you might hear t uh, these terms uh, kind of thrown around. And uh, again, it, it comes down to manufacturers, downstreams are going to be your local retailers, your local stores, things like that. The interesting part is that upstream companies are stocking up faster than downstream right now. So what does that actually mean and how does that actually benefit uh, the trucking companies and what does that actually mean to trucking companies? So so the so that's the interesting part more it, it basically means more long haul trips are a possibility so let's see we got someone here on the line let's see if we can maybe it's one of our callers probably alex uh grabbed that call i'm assuming <laughs> sounds like alex grabbed that call and i'm sure he'll message me and let me know if, if that's the case or they hang up all right. If anything, if you are calling into the show, just give us another call. Extension 3, that'll come out. I'll get you on a call. So what, what does this actually mean? So what, what this actually means, guys, and again, thank you so much. And guys, I'll ask you, hit the like button if you would. I'll help get the video out there. Uh, not much to ask. You know, I really do appreciate it. It certainly helps a ton. Uh, so more long haul trips uh, of hauling raw materials and parts because it's the upstream suppliers, manufacturers, all these guys are actually the ones who are filling up their coffers with something, with products, things like that. So the likelihood is that you're probably going to have more long haul freight and it's probably going to be more towards upstream. So you're going to be hauling more raw materials, more uh, materials needed for production and less final products going out to retailers. So that is a potential. Uh, there is potential for price increases upstream, which could affect your bottom line. So that could be something that you may want to focus on. Generally, this rings the bells for me for flatbed and step deck freight. Generally, especially at this time of the year, this is when things start to really pick up with construction and uh, new home starts and things like that. So flatbedders definitely take a look at that. Same with uh, with uh, dry vans are also going to benefit from very similar circumstances and reefers are getting a real fair shake with uh, california and florida uh, with produce season so there is that now there are some warehousing woes as they call them uh, there's less space available in warehouses right now and this could um, this could lead to a couple of problems all right number one it could definitely lead to delays at loading and unloading docks we're all aware when you know when the warehousing space is low they got to really you know dig to get your product out so it definitely thank you for the compliments let me know if you could if you'd like me to call in yeah absolutely uh give us a call text this is one of the things i was actually asking the other day i was saying text uh it would be so cool for you to call in because as a customer as a very positive individual i think that you could come across to the viewers and to those folks who will be watching this video later giving us some tips uh, what has been something that's, you know, that worked well for you in working with Andy and some of the other things that maybe you could recommend. So would love to hear from you. If uh, Please, you know, don't don't be shy. Give us a call text. I, uh, you know, I'll grab the call, put you on the line. It would be super, super awesome, man. So would love that. So uh, again, guys, the number, let me see if I could put it up here, right there, 801-448-6363, extension three. Feel free, give us a call, uh, text. Would love to hear from you, sir. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see more delays of loading and unloading docks and uh, also warehousing costs are potentially going to go up and with you know with the space limitations, they're gonna have to get into other locations, other space, because you can't just, they're not rubber, right? So as those costs go up, then uh, transportation costs generally follow that as well. But again, on the upstream side, less on the downstream side however in april and into may that's going to flip we're already seeing that so in april and may we're going to be seeing more of the downstream which is going to increase transportation costs which is a benefit for you and i you guys so this is all very good stuff now trucking on the right so let's look at utilization rates all right those have um have, have had some changes as well trucks are getting booked up more often so i think that might be text there let me grab that hey this is vitaly Hi, Tex, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Tex, can you hear me? You cannot hear me. Let me do this. One sec. Hold on, hold on. All right, Tex, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Hey, How this are you, sir? Doing good. Thanks for calling in. Sorry, I didn't have your name pop up on a call right in. I was like, okay, I hope I'm talking to the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Where are you parked? I am parked uh, in the middle of Nebraska. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah, just west of uh, Lincoln. Oh. Uh, man, yeah, I, I didn't even take a look at my hours mm. directly before I headed off. And, and uh, uh, Big Springs, that's where I'm at. Big Springs. And I was, 
Yeah, I'm trying to make it uh, from uh, Laramie to Kansas City. And mm-hmm. I didn't even look at how many hours I had available. I just got in the truck and all of a sudden I'm down the, I'm 200 miles down the road and I got a ding. Hey, you got an hour left. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. So, well, hopefully yeah, you, you oh, won't well. do that scuba diving, you know, cause that's a little more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little low well, on air. <laughs> the, 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 the plan is, uh, not this week, but next week, uh, mm-hmm. diving in Miami. Yeah. Wow. Uh, my uh, my customer uh, in Dallas Fort Worth I got some internal news for them next week, and then uh, then they got uh, their custom uh, stuff down there in Miami the week after. Oh, so that'll work out that perfectly. The plan. Very cool. Oh man. yeah, awesome. super duper. No, that's awesome. We I, I told you about we had another gentleman that was a diver, and that was his only uh, thing that he said. He's look, I'll work, and he's a great guy. Work real hard, stayed with us for a long time, and but his initial stipu- stipulation was that look i have one hobby i do one thing i should not be bothered i will be out for as long as i need if you guys can work with that and you can live with me that way we're going to make a good partnership and a good partnership it was and he was, he was a diver as well um so definitely definitely a very interesting do, do we call well, it a sport or what is it well and you know uh because there's third parties listening and, and people getting into this new and whatnot and, and even people that have been in it for a while it, th- that's a great comment to make is, is get yourself a good hobby because mm-hmm. in this business you're going to sit in the truck you know and, and you're going to be there for a while what whatever the hobby is if it's if it's scuba diving or if it's getting out and walking and running or playing some golf or something 100 you know, percent have have that a part of your regimen uh because you're going to go crazy just driving all the time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yet I, I want to pitch it back to you and say, uh, it, it's a complimenting feature to partner my business with your business because you guys are empathetic to those types of situations that, yeah, if, if I want to seriously go diving and, and I want to go to San Diego, y'all will bend over backwards to try and find bring me you the, there. the best load to get me down there not not just oh well here's something for a dollar a mile mm-hmm. y'all will, y'all will do it in a smart way and and that's what i really love yeah i really appreciate that andy yeah definitely works real hard on that he like takes it really personal <laughs> when a load falls off and things like that so no i definitely appreciate that that's one of the things you know i noticed i was watching a lot of uh youtube shorts instagram shorts or whatever reels and i see a lot of trucking stuff there and one of the popular videos is when the guy approaches and says hey you know uh, how long have you been trucking is this your truck how many miles you got stuff like that and one of the questions he inev- inevitably asks is well what do you do on your free time and, guy, and they're all confused. They're like, oh, well, we ain't got no free time. Well, do you have any hobbies? No, I ain't got no hobbies. So what do you do, you know, f- for fun? And, and they're just dumbfounded. So, yeah, I think that's, right. you, you got to do something outside of it, you know. And trucking provides us the, you know, wonderful opportunity to do so. We had a gentleman, he was a, a little bit older with his wife. They had all paid off equipment and everything. They, they you know, ran a very successful uh, line of businesses, not in trucking, but well, sort of in transportation. And eventually he gave up those businesses to his kids and uh, opened up a trucking company. We got them going. And their whole goal was that, look, we'll make money, but have you guys send me wherever I want to go. We're going to park, we're going to explore the country. And then we're going to get in the truck and we're going to go to another area and we're going to explore the country. So they still made really good money because that was a, during a really good market. And he exited the market at the right time. So that worked out really well for them. And, you know, I hope that, you know, they continue their 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 uh, you know their exploration of the country if you will their visits and everything but I, I I always thought that that was really remarkable you know right it's definitely right, really right. cool stuff well Tex I wanted to ask you man yeah. you're you're a good guy to ask I mean what do you what would you say because one of the things that we run into consistently is uh, you know a lot of people get really downtrodden you know they really feel bad like you know when you have one bad day a second day and God forbid a third bad day you know how do you keep your wits about yourself you know how do you keep your uh, you know, you kind of uh, keep yourself in good, good standing, if you will. Well, that's an excellent question. And, you know, for one, uh, I kind of go back to get yourself a hobby. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that, that does kind of help, help keep your sanity. Uh, You know, because when I'm not driving or or taking care of the truck and whatnot, I'll I'll be reading something about diving, uh, uh, looking up the next places. And that kind of gets my mind off of the business of whatever has kind of gone on. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, additionally, I, I know there's a lot of uh, 
uh, faithful uh, people out there, especially in the trucking business. And especially so on a Sunday. Yeah. Another thing that mm-hmm. I do is I've got a reading group uh, every Saturday that we meet on Zoom. Cool. And we read from the Bible for about uh, quite quite lengthy of a time. <laughs> But it's a it's a great time that we all set down. We don't I don't I don't drive on that day. I, you know I dedicate it just to the Lord, and we kind of read that. So there's a spiritual aspect there too. How cool and is that? that? Kind of gets you through those bad times. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I met a gentleman uh, you know over the phone in one of these con- types of conversations, and he he actually did the exact same thing, and also on a Sunday, um, and th- they did it on a conference call with a whole bunch of people in it. But this was a few years ago before you know. Uh, Zoom was as popular as it is today. Right. So that makes perfect sense. Um, so. You know, uh, on on the, uh, this same subject, uh, getting yourself a hobby and and, and keep yourself self, uh, mentally active. Mm-hmm. Another th- another thing that I do is I'm enrolled in a college course. Now I, I take it online mm-hmm. every Sunday morning. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm taking uh, advanced Hebrew. Oh, and wow. so uh, I, I like it because, one, I continue my further education, mm-hmm. uh, but two, I'm, I'm actually uh, learning an, another language. I'm actually at the college level now, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it, it really helps me form my Bible beliefs because, hey, the, the Bible was originally written in Hebrew. So mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that uh, if ever I have a problem with a, a word or a phrase in English, I can just go straight to the Hebrew and go, oh, well, that's actually what it means or says. Mm-hmm. No, that's fantastic. So with that, with that being said, you know, not to, not to encourage people to kind of do something like that, but continue your education in some form or fashion. I mean, you know, you could take a, even a business course, uh, you know, just once a week or something like that. And if you're continuing your education, I think that can help you in the business. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's really important to uh, keep the noggin, you know, the old noodle working. Uh, I think it's very easy to become complacent. One of the things that I, for example, I've always uh, been a, an avid reader. Uh, I mean, it helped that as a kid, I worked at the Salt Lake Public Library System. And so I visited all the libraries, made friends with everyone. And I was constantly, since I had the menial job of putting books back as a kid, you know, I had a problem with it because I, everything was so interesting. I kept pulling aside so many books that, you know, I wasn't a very good employee for them because I just kept spending all this time reading. Everything was of interest. And uh, that's, you know, I, I was really happy with that because I developed a lot of different skills and things like that. But over the last 12 years in business, uh, coming up in the next few days, actually, in about 10 days, I'll be 12 years in business, um, is it, it, it's made it ex- exceedingly more and more difficult to to not only get reading done, but to motivate yourself to start reading. And when you do start reading, I have found myself having, you know, poor comprehension, terrible retention, um, a very short attention span. And, uh, you know, all those negative attributes that come along with not doing, not reading for a long period of time. And that you almost have to force yourself to do it, but then it comes back. You know, it comes back. And right. there's a lot of people that are not big readers. They, they don't like, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, and that's completely fine. I'm completely fine with it. But you have to do something to kind of get that noodle uh, working because we really atrophy very quickly and, uh, you know, lose yeah. our edge. So I'm, I'm super happy well, to hear that. You, you and I grew up around the same time. So, you know, uh, even some other guys may recognize the fact that going into an old library, and you had those old library cards to kind of look up your subject and instead of using a computer. Boy, that was that was an adventure in and of itself. Yeah, the Dewey <laughs> Decimal <laughs> System. Yeah, about. absolutely. The Dewey Decimal System. That's right. Yep, yep. But you know, I I I, amp- I want to amplify what you're saying there because just getting into the reading habit, it, it, it's good for your eyes. It's good for your brain. You, you're not looking at a screen, and, and you can pick on any number of subjects and just really learn about it Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm of the mindset uh i'm in the transportation slash uh logistics industry and i i like yourself want to keep abreast of what's going on in the industry who's writing this who's writing that Mm -hmm. what is what is the hot topics going on right now How, how does this affect me in the next two weeks two years so, uh, yeah, I, I just encourage anybody else out there listening to us to just just begin reading, even if it's as small as uh, the OOIDA magazine that's mm-hmm. put out. 
you know, and just reading a couple of articles. Yeah. yeah, it can get you ahead, too. I mean, if you can get ahead of, uh, uh, of some of the changes in the industry that are coming up and, uh, you know, follow the stats, follow the, some of the data that's available, that's freely available, that will only help you and, you know, get you to make decisions, uh, you know, in a, in a better fashion, I suppose. Um, and, and just generally, it's just a much better thing because, you know, it's really easy nowadays with so much uh, accessibility to video and short form content. And, you know, it really eats away our brain, gets us absolutely zero value out of it. And uh, if anything, you know, you do that for an hour with, you know, 30 to 60 second videos. I just imagine the neurological damage of having all these different endorphins and all these different uh you know, brain chemicals that are firing and uh, the different emotions that you feel from sadness to happiness to joy to, you know, being terrified and fear and all these other things. And you're just switching, constantly switching from one uh, state to another. I, I don't have any proof of this, but I don't think that's a healthy thing for our human brain. <laughs> right. You, you know, right. I, but, you know, I want to I'll go back to something before I called. You were talking about uh, the upstream, midstream and downstream operations mm -hmm. there. And and I'm familiar with uh, mm -hmm. what you were already talking about, some of those articles. Mm -hmm. But yet it, 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 this is a nice feature of, of of me staying abreast of this. And then I get to hear from a professional such as yourself that also read this. And you kind of give another take. You know, there's something that you had said that I thought was very interesting how the upstream uh, is picking up. And mm -hmm. you said something very key you, that you immediately said that that triggers in my mind flatness. Yep. And, and I, and I never thought of that trigger, but it made a lot of sense once you said it, because I said, well, yeah, a lot of your more raw materials go on a flatbed first and then they transition into a van and then they transition into that retail. So, you know, and, and, and just, Spelling that stuff out for yourself, what this means to me, and then and 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 but yet knowing this information and then talking with another person such as yourself or even just watching the video, sure, and confirming in your own mind, yeah, okay, I trust this guy V, uh, and and he he comes on the same uh, conclusions I do, or maybe you came up with a different conclusion that I'd never thought of, and, and that's that's a that's a great way to keep yourself smart in. The no, absolutely. We have to, you know, think for ourselves and stay out of the echo chamber. It's way too easy to, to jump into that, especially in today's world with all this crazy stuff going on in the world, all the politics and wars and all the stuff that's going on. And it's really easy to kind of, uh, you know, pigeonhole ourselves uh, with some of these concepts. No, absolutely. And I, 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 you know, would be doing a disservice if I didn't ask you this, uh, this other next question. I think you're the right guy to ask. You know, I know you've worked uh, fairly closely with Andy. You know, uh, we, he and I discuss, you know, your progress and work uh, all the time along with other customers, of course. But one of the things that he, he's always, you know, he's always happy. There's ne he's never had a, like a negative comment or something like that, you know, unless, you know, a load falls off and he's just upset about that happening, but that has nothing to do with you. So what would you say was one of the things that is, uh, it seems like it's something has consistently helped you, uh, you know, stay on a positive up and up with, with your dispatcher. Like, is there any tips you could give to other guys, whether they're dispatchers with, uh, working with us or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, any any tips you could give some of these carriers and owner operators in uh, working yes, better? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so I, I've been in this business uh, almost ten years now. I've had a number of dispatchers, uh, really from the uh, the single mom or stay at home mom, if you will, who only has four or five trucks. Mm -hmm. Mainly, that's what I dealt with in my past, uh, and now I've obviously elevated to a service such as yours. Uh, which is by far better because, one, your business is focused on the business of, of transport. The, the, the stay-at-home moms, if you will, uh, dispatchers that only have a few trucks, they, they, they're running their family at the, at, during business hours. And so when you're trying to make those phone calls with them, you know, and they, and they go, oh, I'm, I'm picking up my kids at school. I'm not in front of the computer. Well, that's, just, that's not business. You know, it, when I call Andy... He's in front of the, the the computer and he is there working for me. Yeah. And and so uh, back to your 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 comment question. What's my advice for guys? Listen, whether you have that uh, dispatcher that works from home, maybe it even is your wife or girlfriend, uh, or you're working with a large company such as yours, you you have to implicitly trust that dispatcher. They they're they're trusting on you. 
that you're going to make it on time and you're not going to break down and not going to run out of hours, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You need to trust them that they are looking at one to 15 different computer screens and getting you the best deal there is. And you just have to trust that that's the way the things go. Now you can give it uh, you know, a few months, maybe a couple of years and your trust has waned uh, with that industry. Well, then I would just say, Hey, to those listening out there that haven't called you and I, and I'm not, a, I'm not a paid spokesman, <laughs> but listen, no, no. I have been down your, been down your road before you, you need to just call V or, or talk with Alex. And, and, and I, I tell you, your, 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 your misfortunes will be answered real quick uh, because they're wow. dedicated to really helping you. And that's, and that's how Andy and I have built that relationship. One, I already trusted him from day one uh, because I, I, I know for a fact he knows more information than I do because I'm not looking at what the market screen is, is doing. Uh, at number two, he and I talk a number of times during the day about what we're going to do next, what, what the next three or four days are going to look like, even what next week is going to look like. Cause I'm keeping him informed of what I think I'm going to make. He keeps me informed of, okay, if we're going to be in such and such city, I think the next plan should be this or that. Mm-hmm. And maybe the next time he and I talk, that plan has changed or that plan stays the same, mm-hmm. but he's keeping abreast of what's going on in the market. And, uh, Absolutely. you know, uh, it, it, yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give a really crappy example. I can't think of the actual day or town, but I remember us being somewhere and l- let's just say the rates getting out of there were really crappy. Let's say it's, you know, dollar fifty a mile or something. Mm-hmm. And Andy was like, Hey, listen, we don't have to go anywhere right now. Just park, go get yourself a turkey sandwich, relax. Let's, let's see what tomorrow brings. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The next day, it wasn't great, but it was $2.25 plus mm-hmm. uh, to get out of there. Because it flipped. So, so, you know, tactical patience is key. And yet at the same time, that also took trust on my part to say, okay, Andy, you know the market better than I do. I'll listen to you. Absolutely. And the market has shifted. That's a really good example. I mean, recently we've seen, uh, you know, the, the East Coast was doing well, then that completely dried out. Then we started seeing freight from the northern part of the country where in the past it couldn't, nothing was really coming out. But then we started seeing like uh, Fargo, North Dakota really heat up and really good freight coming out of there, which normally that's not the case. So it does change. And, and that change literally happened like overnight because we were even looking at other carriers coming out of that same area being dispatched by the same dispatchers, but a day prior to that or two days prior to that, and the rates were like a buck difference per mile. So that was just a huge, huge difference. And yeah, it makes that difference between a buck fifty and two fifty. It's, you know, a matter of just covering operating costs or actually taking something home. So absolutely, I think that trust is uh, you know, very, very much in in need and very, very necessary. Um, a lot of times people they just you know, I understand that, you know, you guys have your own operating costs and there's a lot riding on you guys. It absolutely is. But if you can't trust your dispatcher to do a good job, then, you know, you probably don't need that dispatcher in the first place. He's going to get into this useless arguments and it's always going to seem like, well, they're not performing. So we do have right. that. That does happen quite a bit. So uh, quite a bit in terms of people don't have the trust to, to basically do what, <laughs> what they hired a dispatcher to do. So absolutely. Well, and you know, with that being said, you, you, you have to, and I'm saying you mm-hmm. as the individual trucker, the owner of your company, you have to do your own due diligence and you have to track your numbers Absolutely. every single day. Mm-hmm. At a minimum, you've got to put in how many miles you've done for that day, how many hours you've done for that day. And if you made a delivery, what, what that price was. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you've got to keep a little spreadsheet that's adding all this stuff up so you can know what your, num- your actual numbers are. Uh, now, and then you've you got to put down every expense, too, so mm-hmm. that you can understand, hey, listen, it actually cost me $1.30, let's just call it, mm-hmm. uh, to go down the road. My, my cost is a little higher. I know my cost is $1.90 mm-hmm. a mile. That's quite a bit, oh, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but 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 that's okay as long as you know your cost. Then you can see if your dispatcher is actually working for you or not. I, I'll give a really crappy example. Uh, some of us like playing golf or maybe even going bowling. 
Well, you, you obviously keep the score at your game, but have you kept scores at your game for your entire life? Mm-hmm. You know, so you really know what you, you know, you, maybe you had a good game, maybe you didn't have a good game one day or another, but in the overall picture, uh, the longer you played that game, whatever that game is, are you hitting those averages or are you above those averages? And you need to know that in trucking. And so, you know, with my old dispatchers, I, I knew that I was averaging $2.25 a mile over the course of a year with these girls. Mm-hmm. And that was just not good with a cost of $1.90 a mile. I moved over to you guys, and I'm at two ninety and three dollars plus. Absolutely. And, and and I've only been working with you guys since January. Yeah, it's only now, been a few months. Absolutely. Yep. Now, now to 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 be fair for those that are listening in, I I, I supplement that because I've got actual customers on the side that AFT doesn't actually dispatch for me that I make a whole lot more money on because you know I've got to deal with a guy that I'm running right now for three dollars and sixty cents a mile. Yep. Uh, that's just incredible. And there's no way that, you know, AFT could ever uh, get me that. But uh, Andy is really good at being able to get me to my customer uh, at, a, in a quick manner at a decent price that we're actually making money. Absolutely. And so even those, even those numbers, I know that you guys are taking care of me. And so, you know, uh, yeah. Because otherwise, you can just sit around the truck stop and go, "Oh, these loads suck, and mm-hmm. the dispatcher sucks." Well, what's your actual numbers? Yeah, you got to know your operating gotta, costs. You got to know them. Yeah, yeah. and that's the, and, the thing. And you've you've got to make at least thirty percent mm-hmm. on a load. Uh, otherwise, you're going to go out of business. Yeah. I don't care what retail business you're in. If you're ma- if you're not making twenty to thirty percent, you shouldn't even turn the truck on. Mm-hmm. No, 100%. Because, and, and we have a lot of customers that do that. I've talked about it in the past. Every time I talk to folks who have a customer, uh, number one, I always tell them, hold on to that. That's going to help you a ton. You don't need to share it with us. Uh, uh, Jerome, uh, so Tex does uh, drive in. He's got a drive in. He's just got a vented. Um, so, and, and we do, if you're asking if we do flatbed, we do uh, quite a bit of flatbed work. We have quite a bit of flatbed customers, but tax, he does a drive-in. And, but, but we do have a lot of customers who have their own, uh, their own customers. And we always say, look, hold on to that. You don't need to share it with us. Just work with us in terms of scheduling and we'll get you there. We'll get you from there. We'll, we'll make sure that we're working with your schedule. And we had a lot of people that were doing, you know, meat out of Colorado. We had guys doing dog food. We've had guys doing hay on flatbeds. We've had uh, several others, uh, several guys who were doing meat actually. And it worked out really well because they, they were really having a hard time with back hauls. So I don't want them, you know, getting rid of those customers to run spot freight. You're not going to average as high. And if you already have a good customer, hold on to them because they're really hard to get, you know, they're hard to find. And, uh, you know, just work with your dispatcher to make it work. And uh, to kind of uh, solidify what you're saying, I actually pulled up some of the comments going back like three months. You, you, you had put down, like, for example, one of the first ones three months ago was AFT Dispatch. Uh, dispatch me this week. We ran 8,200 at 437 per mile drive in. Uh, you know, you had some comments. And the next week you said uh, AFT got me 4,700 this week. Drive in work 340 per, uh, per mile uh, for the month. They've, they have me at 364 per mile with over $14,000 in gross. That's just three months ago. It's not like that was during like some remarkable time in the market. So guys, if you trust your dispatcher, if you work with them, if you use your noggin, if you have your own customers, if you follow the news and, and just, you know, move forward in, in, in this fashion, then you're absolutely going to make, uh, you know, a good amount of money, but you, you have to put in your part into it. We have a lot of folks that we work with where dispatch is just like, they're, they're afraid to call you. They're hoping they're keeping their fingers crossed, hoping that you will accept the load because they know it's a good load and it's going to get you in the right direction. You're going to have yourself a good week, but they're sitting there shaking in their boots because a, you know, some customers are just extremely difficult because they'll just say nothing under 250 a mile, but it's like, you're coming out of a bad market. This is a good rate for that. You're going to a good market, but they don't hear any of those things. They just, they're, they're, you know, like a horse with blinders. It has to be, you know, 250 or higher. I don't care if I'm in Miami. I don't care if I'm in Connecticut. I don't care if I'm in Boston uh, in the middle of winter. Uh, it doesn't matter. They just, they need to do that. And a lot of these guys will sit and sit and sit and sit, and they don't understand that you have fixed costs. You may be saving on variable costs, you know, but your fixed costs are going to eat you alive. You know, truck and trailer payments and insurance, all those things, they don't care whether you're driving or not. So, Tex, thank you so much, man. 
uh, you, you really helped a ton. I, I and especially at the beginning of the of the of the video. So I think a lot of folks that will join in, they're going to really benefit from this, man. Thank you so much, and I hope to hear from you. I hope you have a really good week uh, starting tomorrow, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and, and if I could just throw in one last yes, thing please. here for the, the new guys that are probably listening, and they're like, hey, how, how did Tex get his customers, or how do these other guys get their customers? Well, yeah, great. look, it's a lot easier than what you think, but it does take work. Yep. And the, the simplest thing is uh, print yourself out uh, a little um, flyer on a piece of paper, have a picture of your truck, the DOT number, a phone number, an email, you know, that type of thing. And, and you're going to get dispatched uh, to some places that only have one dock or something like that. Every one of us have been to them. Yep. And you just go in there and you glad hand with people, talking with them. Hey, how often do you do this load? Especially if it's in an area you like to go or come from. And, and when they say, you know, hey, we only do this load once a week or maybe once a month, that's definitely the load you want to jump in on right there. Uh, it may not be the, the super great deal that you like, but just take it. And, and let's just say it's $2,000. If you're already making $2,000 from that broker and you tell that manager, hey, I'll do this for $2,000, listen, you're already hauling it for $2,000 anyway. But if you quote those guys two thousand dollars, you are coming in way under that broker, and they would they are seriously going to consider you to be their their carrier. That's and a great a lot strategy. Of these small people, they really like knowing, hey, this is Johnny, and he's going to be here on time, and Johnny's going to deliver this. He's going to take care of my stuff. They love that relationship. They don't like calling C H Robertson, and they don't know who they're going to get. They would rather do it with a guy like yourself or a girl like yourself. So, you know, it's, it's easier than what you think, but it does take a lot of glad handing. It does take a lot of talking with people, but there you go. There's, there's my. No, man, that's awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. I have that conversation with a lot of folks a lot, uh, uh, often. And uh, just be super careful. One thing, he said everything 100%. Just be super careful with the contracts that you're signing because as you sign that setup packet and you sign that carrier, uh, you, that, that rate confirmation, you may be contractually obligated to share a portion of that income if you do end up or, or the entire income if you in get getting busted by the, by the broker because they generally have that one-year expiration, you know. Uh, on the contract. So you want to be careful there. Um, but other than that, yeah, you, you can do it. You know, one thing that I did is over the years, and I probably made a mistake of throwing them away, but for over 10 years, I kept every single BOL that we've ever ran in physical form as well. I, I have copies of them in, in, in scanned documents. But the reason I did that is because I knew that every single one of those contracts had expired long ago. And I had all the information, including where the pickup was, where the delivery was, what the facility was, what they charged us at that time, what we got paid, and what the commodities were. So if I found a chicken spot out in Alabama, I could do what Tex just uh, just mentioned and, and, and build myself a, li uh, a lane there. And no one could ever say anything to me because that contract has expired like eight years ago, another one six years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. And you can actually, uh, you know, really run those lanes and do that. And, and another benefit is that as carriers, we don't have to have a bond. You are working one-on-one, -on -one, right. one corporation with another. You don't have to have a bond. You don't have to have any of those additional regulations that brokers have to go through. And you're avoiding brokers, freight forwarders and the like, and you're making all the money. You're working one-on-one, -on -one, building a relationship. I, I see nothing bad there. Good on you, man. That's and awesome. And I'm, I'm glad you threw that caveat in there. And actually, I have a customer that makes paint uh, really near my ranch in South Fort Worth and mm -hmm. goes all the way up to uh, uh, up to Wyoming, uh, excuse me, in Idaho. And uh, that customer had a relationship with Landstar, so they could never actually do outside of Landstar. Mm -hmm. But I, the guy that uh, runs the warehouse there, got we got to be such good friends. He got me an extra thousand bucks from Landstar specifically only for me. Mm -hmm. And then every time that load came, I always got that load. I always got it. Now it was from Landstar, but I made more than what Landstar was actually giving it to the regular old guy out there. Yeah. So there, there, there's another thing, and it just takes glad hand and, and, and meet people. No, absolutely. That's what you want to do. And I've always told people look, make some cards, make some flyers, maybe. 
uh, call in, talk to the gatekeepers, keep a little spreadsheet, as he mentioned, uh, text mentioned, keeping a spreadsheet for all your all your rates and all that information. That's very good information. Put another spreadsheet together, company information, their address, what they do, some information, some notes you've done. In fact, use HubSpot, open up. It's, a, it's probably the best CRM you can use that's free has all the tools that you need. You can build a small little database, uh, keep track of all your notes, set up tasks that will remind you to make phone calls. Hey, you know, after a while, at first it's really easy. You could keep track of it on your phone or something like that. But as you start to develop a pipeline and they're in different stages of your contact, um, and you have different uh, priorities with each individual. You might have contacts, uh, contact information for the owner at one point, or maybe just the secretary, or you know, you're getting in touch, or maybe you've sent a card, or maybe you sent an email, or maybe you need to gather their email, or, or there, there are so many different things that you could be getting, and it's gonna be really hard to keep track of it. Plus, it's gonna help you a ton because you're gonna leave notes after a phone call, and you're gonna know that last time I talked to Bobby, and uh, you know, he was saying that there was an expectation of some freight coming in, or he was having a hard time time with a carrier that he's working with or he complained about something or whatever might be the case you can't remember all this stuff but if you leave a note they're going to definitely remember the uh, you know appreciate the fact that you have remembered you don't have to tell them you're keeping track of all these things and keeping notes but it's going to make you uh, much uh, much more approachable and easier to work with when they they're like wow this guy actually listened to me when we were on the phone you know, and that's going to help. Then it, since it's local or maybe it's, it's going to be you know maybe it's not a local guy but if it is you can go shake some hands and and find those customers that way eventually they will give you some work now this works really well for local finding local customers uh, which is what i've done and uh and that's worked really well for me but you could do exactly the same thing with otr and regional freight um, yeah you might not be able to meet those guys i have there's there's a broker i work with for for a number of years now um, back uh, in the pacific northwest i've met with the guy i i've had my whole family go out there we've met and we've we've discussed things and we've had dinner together and we're good good friends and you know, I know his birthday and when his kids, you know, grow up and stuff, like, you know, are born and stuff like that. So you can build those relationships. And uh, there's been a number of times where we scratched his back when the market was really, really good. We stuck, we stuck with him. So we'd made less money than we could have made in a spot market. But when the market flipped, guess what? We still had our position and we're still running that freight to this day, you know, so you can't have it all. You can't have it all. I mean, you could go out there in spot market and kind of milk that, but don't forget about the guys who have been taking care of you. You know, don't bite the hen that feeds you kind of a situation. So definitely. And thanks for uh, responding, Jerome, there. Yeah, Jerome, uh, yeah, we're definitely doing quite well, and Texas is doing quite well. And one of the things that he does is, again, he works very closely with dispatch. He's got his own customers. He's super easy to work with. Uh, the dispatchers love them, and, uh, you know, we, we're certainly hoping to get more customers like that, and hopefully Texas decides to expand and get some uh, company drivers, at least on owner operators, whatever his decision is. So, uh, definitely, you know, definitely keep at it and you'll, you'll get there. Awesome. Text. Thanks so much, man. Um, I think I still have you on the line, right? You're still there. Yes, sir. I'm there still are. here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better and uh, doing the show, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. Folks. Definitely. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, thank you so much. We'll definitely catch you. Uh, hopefully the guys will catch uh, your call in the replay. And I'm going to get back to the LMI. We're going to kind of finish up with this part. And uh, because I really do think there is some good news we, we have to be looking. And I really think just like we've made uh, videos in the past going into uh, saying that April, May are going to start warming up. We are actually seeing this in the data, in the numbers that are coming in. So I'm really glad I don't have to backpedal and explain anything because things are actually moving but remember we are in a really strange time with wars and all this other stuff so anything can change on a dime in a, in a matter of uh snap of the fingers you know what i mean so definitely definitely good stuff thank you so much uh tex really appreciate it man don't be a stranger thanks again yes sir I'll thank see you very you. much bye-bye so that was Tex, you guys. Uh, really cool guy. I've brought, I've mentioned him, brought up um, his name several times. That guy, I would definitely uh, listen to what he said. You know, keep that noggin going. Keep yourself informed. Keep yourself, uh, you know, uh, uh, having that positive attitude is going to really get you a lot of different places. And take his advice on finding those some of those customers. They could really, really supplement your income and oftentimes even replace your income uh, with the way that you're going to end up pricing that freight in uh, out in the contract market or on a you know one to one B two B market versus having to have a middleman like a broker or a freight forwarder in between you, which doesn't mean anything uh, because here's the other thing the guy I had mentioned that we worked with for several years he's a broker just like any other broker 
right? So we're not working on a direct basis with them. Although we have had plenty of uh, direct freight customers as well here locally in the state of Utah as well. We actually started their business that way um, soon to be 12 years. But jumping back in, guys, I'm going to switch over here. Again, thank you so much, Tex. Really appreciate that. Um, in fact, let's... let's uh, yeah, let's just finish up with this part. So we're, what we were talking about is, uh, is, is is the transportation side of things. So there's going to be cost increases with warehousing. There's going to be more delays on loading and unloading in terms of docks, and th there's nothing new there. But what we're uh, ultimately going to see, let's see here, let's, maybe this will be better. What we're ultimately going to, going to see are uh, our truck uh, transportation costs increasing. They're going to be uh, on the rise, both utilization of existing equipment that's on the market as well as the rates to move that freight. So trucks are getting booked up more and more. That's going to be your utilization aspect of the LMI that we're, that we're reviewing right now. And that's a good sign. So the breakdown is like this. So utilization, that's good news. It's going up. Uh, that means that more trucks are on the road hauling uh, more goods. So that's always a good, uh, good news. Now, as far as the rates, there was a slight dip in rates recently. So what we're actually seeing is not a decline. What we're seeing is a reduction in the rate of improvement. So things were improving better. They're just, they continue to improve, but at a slower rate. Okay, so they're still on the rise, overall speaking, right? So keep an eye on for potentially higher rates downstream, especially as consumer spending starts to pick up in a warmer months and with all the holidays and stuff like that's coming in. Um, yeah, Jerome, keep, keep on going, man. If you ever need any help, man, you, like, Give us a call. Talk to Alex. He'll be able to maybe give you some give you some tips or whatnot. If I don't know how new your company is, maybe we can help you with some of the permits. Uh, I was planning to make a show about uh, permits, and I, I might actually end up doing a video about that. Some of the special states. Really, help, you know, help yourself. Uh, give Alex a call, give me a call, whatnot. If there's something that we can help you with and we can point you in the right direction, we'd love to do that. The guys in the comments are very responsive as well. If you have questions, our community is pretty strong. If you leave your comments there in the videos, a lot of guys will actually go in and respond and start a whole thread. They're very, very helpful. Very, very cool um, group of people we got here. So, but yeah, if you ever need anything, give us a call. Number's right there, 801-448-6363, and then you can get in touch with us easily. So yeah, so we're gonna have some some good stuff. So there's gonna be consumer spending is gonna uh, going up. So so I would definitely say buckle up for the future. There's definitely a lot of things that uh, that may change, but the future forecast suggests continued growth and potentially even higher transportation prices, especially downstream, which is us. We're closer to downstream. Uh, this could mean a busy year ahead for truckers specifically. So this might just be the time. Three year authority, awesome. So with a three-year authority, you're well past that point of where brokers aren't going to work with you. You're well past that point. Uh, you may want to look at a few different things. Uh, now, don't put any personally identifiable information here or anything like that. But what I would do is I would run your info on Safer. I would look at uh, Carrier Assure. I would take a look at see if there's any any information there that may need to be updated. Are your are your uh, uh, do you have the the your audit passed and all the doc, all the information's posted on there? Do you have all your inspections? Do you do you have a positive versus a negative rate on on safer for your inspections? And uh, you said help me with the permits. You mean alcohol? No, no, not alcohol permits. So, so there's going to be your uh, Oregon, uh, Kentucky, New Mexico, California, nowadays Connecticut, as well as New York. Uh, those states require. Uh, they require special permitting. Uh, Oregon requires a bond or use your temporaries up to 20, uh, 20 trip permits. New York can get a simple HUD permit. Kentucky will do a KYU. Just remember to get yourself decals with the KYU number printed on the side of the truck. Uh, the rest of the states are super easy. New York's going to give you a sticker. Uh, California is going to give you a, a, a CARB compliance number, which I, I haven't worked with them. Uh, Connecticut will just give you an out-of-state uh, carrier ID. You don't have to post it anywhere if you do a lot of business with uh, Connecticut. And uh, New Mexico is like 10 bucks or something, or maybe it's 20 bucks. I think it's $10 a year, and then you just do your filings. There are some tricks with Oregon that you have to kind of comply with and do a few things uh, correctly in order to get the get the bond requirement removed and we'll make a video about that so just definitely subscribe to the channel and i'll make sure that once i post that you know you'll you'll get the notification you'll get that and if you need if you want to get those permits not the alcohol permits but those state permits literally just shoot me a text to that number on your screen uh you know give me your name 
uh, give me, you know, hey, I'm on the live, I just need those permits or whatnot, and we'll send you that. You can literally take care of that yourself. It's super easy, or just, you know, call us on Monday, and Alex will send those over to you as well. So, yeah, so definitely there. Um, not having inspections is one of the biggest deal killers. Uh, there's going to be a lot of loads, a lot of loads that you just, you, you, you'll fit, and everything will be fine. You, you qualify, and they just won't give it to you because you have no inspection. So get those inspections. You want to get those out of the way. And then when you do get the clean inspections, make sure, super important, that you actually submit them to the number uh, in the top left corner. They're going to have a fax number, an email. Make sure you submit it. Send them an email and the body of the message write, you know, hey, I'm the such and such carrier company name. Here's my MC. Here's an inspection for this time period. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. Give them your MC or USDOT and then something very, very similar in the subject line. That way you increase your chances of them actually getting that. So definitely get those inspections. And like Tech said, pull into your next way station and ask for one. They will do it. So absolutely. Now, some states may penalize you for that. California, that requires you to make an appointment with the DOT officer. Other states have um, other regulations. So be a little bit uh, careful with that. But you know, you get a lot more bees with honey, so that might really, really help. Or in this case, maybe donuts. So I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's in the, especially at the end of the month, when you need to make their numbers, uh, you know, if you're cool, they're cool. Text at 100%. So Jerome, I would definitely, you know, uh, take care of what uh, Tex is saying, you know, be, be cool with them. Yeah, try that. Uh, try that with Ohio, but they said they, they didn't do voluntary inspections. So there you go. So Ohio uh, apparently is one of those states that they don't do voluntaries, but they, there are other places. Another thing you can do is um, practically every tax commission uh, will have, or like a DMV, MVD, uh, DLD, uh, these organizations generally have an on-site police officer, and they're usually DOT, uh, you know, certified with the, D, uh, with the DOT. I mean, they all are, they're cops, but my, they have special other uh, requisites that they fulfilled, and those guys are usually hanging out doing nothing, and they're kind of bored on a day-to-day, and they might actually be excited to come out and do an inspection for you and issue that document, so give that a try as well. That might work out really well for you as well. Adam, hello, hello, uh, Adam uh, is a busser. I'm probably saying it wrong, so I do apologize for that. All good. Try next date. Uh, you will get one eventually. Someone will say yes. There's that positive attitude. Someone will say yes, man. You will get the right guy, and uh, you will want to pass uh, pass them as soon as possible. Yeah, so you want to get that taken care of. Colorado is pretty cool, especially northbound side of I-25 once you come out uh, of uh, Ratton Pass. So there, right, there you go. So right there, our community is showing uh, our true colors. Texas, you know, giving you examples of where you can get it, uh, giving you some advice on how to get it and to keep, you know, keep your, uh, keep your head up basically. But to kind of finish up guys, uh, I would definitely say, you know, good news for truckers. The LMI suggests logistics industry is in a healthy state of growth with a focus on rebuilding inventories. That's the main highlight for the March LMI. Rebuilding inventories and efficient resource utilization, all right? There are some differences in experience between upstream and downstream firms, and future predictions indicate potential tightening in warehouse capacity and rising prices, particularly for transportation. Good news. While downstream firms are experiencing higher utilization and paying more for transportation currently, they might see a faster increase in prices compared to upstream firms in the coming year due to continued strong consumer demand. So this is what we're asking for. This is what we're looking for. This is what we want. So again, this is the LMI. Uh, as you can see right here, Arizona State University, Colorado State University, College of Business, Rogers, University of Nevada, Reno, Florida, Atlantic University, College of Business, and then of course the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, some of the top PhDs, doctorates, and uh, top minds of the industry provide this information for you uh, to review. So here's the aggregate logistics pricing. We can see that right here, May of 20, what is that? Is that May? Yeah, 2023, June and July were some of the lowest months and we're, we are on an upstream. We can also see that future predictions are looking very, very good for transportation prices here in the bottom right corner. If you can see that, oh, there it is on your screen. So. There are definitely a lot of uh, different opportunities, uh, you know, future upstream and downstream for uh, transportation pricing, utilization capacity, warehousing, I believe, in, yeah, here's inventory. So there's so much uh, information and data here that you guys could actually visit this, visit this uh, every month and take a look at that. So, and you can also look at early versus late March in terms of predictions of what they're looking at. So again, this is March. 
looking at it in April, and this data come out came out on April 2nd. So, so there is that. Now, another thing that I wanted to cover with you guys, and uh, we'll do that here. I'll do a little segue. Thank you again for all the viewers, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, please, once again, a little reminder to hit the like button. Again, uh, just a little ad. Uh, well, I guess I have a little ad. I'll show you guys. Uh, let me see if I can find it. But basically, we're a truck dispatch company. If you have uh, your own MC, you're a leased on owner operator, we can work with you as well and lease you guys on. You work with the same dispatcher, so there's you know no, nothing crazy or anything like that. You, you end up working with the same guys that have been delivering uh, week after week after week after week. And, you know, we've been able to really dispatch guys and, and really get them through this crazy period. So, but here's kind of the, the little video. Another dead end load. Some carriers are crushing it. Maybe it's time to switch to AFD dispatch. See how much more you could be making. Tap the learn more button and see for yourself. Spots are limited. Not all will qualify. Semi trucks only. So, yeah. So, there, there, so there's that. Another long. Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that. So yeah, we're a dispatch company, a lot of information. I'm constantly uh, posting on our blog, a lot of this stuff. So uh, so one of the things that we're gonna be covering today is business structure. I'm gonna jump into that because then I may make a longer video, but I do recommend looking at this blog post specifically. The latest one was the guide for owner operators and you know how to basically uh, gain success with dispatching. And that's the reason why I asked text those questions that I did. Uh, there's a lot of information here. We're looking at fuel efficiency and, you know, and how to help yourself and like some of the truth about being an owner operator, a lot of things that that, uh, people don't really understand or expect uh, as they become um, owner operators. So we're definitely going to jump into that. Now, one of the things that I definitely want to talk with you guys about, and this is actually interesting when I saw this, this was kind of a combination of different, uh, of different stories, and I kind of compiled them together uh, to discuss with you guys autonomous trucking, because we've made several videos over the years about autonomous trucking, let me actually go here. We'll do this. So that's a little bit easier. So about autonomous trucking, you guys can go back and I'll try to leave little cards in the corner so you guys can watch those videos, but they're a little bit dated. Some of them are really fun. Some of them really provide a lot of information. But what we're going to cover today is a bit of a surprise because autonomous trucks, self-driving -tru self trucks, they're expected to show up this year. So yeah. Okay, so Adam is asking, uh, how accurate are prices per load on ATS and uh, ETS2? So uh, I, I'm not sure what you're referring to um, uh, as far as uh, ETS2 and then versus on a road. Are you, uh, can, can you kind of uh, break that down a little bit? Because I, that's not an area, and I might not know anything about that. So I, you, I'm not going to get in on, on that on, on, unless you're able to kind of give me a little bit more detail, um, Adam. Yeah. And then again, uh, one of the last things that tech said is know your costs. you got to know your operating costs. Guys, you can't know if you're doing well or not if you don't have your operating costs. But uh, kind of moving right along, and we'll get back to what Adam is saying. Uh, Self-driving trucks, guys, gear up for takeoff. That's basically what they're saying because what's happening now is that uh, there are multiple major companies that are getting into partnerships. Uh, not just your Googles and not just your Waymos and things like that. Some of the biggest companies out there, not just your, uh, what were they called, uh, Travis... What was his name? Um, um, it was uh, it was a company actually out of Utah. I went on their unveiling. So, oh my God, American Trucks. That's probably why. What it is, <laughs> Adam? Uh, yeah, I've played. I, I that's why it seems so. So I haven't played the European one, but I have played uh, the the American Truck Simulator. And yeah, the it's a lot easier doing business in the video game and uh, you know rates are paying 20 30 bucks a mile or whatnot you know i i definitely grew and i had multiple trucking companies lots of drivers and everything i turned into a, a fleet but um eventually i had to stop because you can't be running a trucking company and then playing trucking games as well <laughs> one second i don't want to blow up your ears so i gotta mute the mic so jumping in, guys. Uh, so yeah, the the prices are definitely not very accurate at all, and the operating costs are not at all. But you you almost got me, Adam. <laughs> self-driving trucks, guys. They're expecting them this year. Okay, so hold on to your hats. The world of self-driving trucks is heating up, and this April 2024 news roundup brings us exciting developments and a glimpse into the future of the industry. Here's what's interesting. Companies are scrambling for the first to be the first to deploy the very first fully driverless trucks. There's a company called Aurora, 
and it's emerging as a front run a front runner at the moment now there were some other companies in the past this may change it's all in flux they're aiming for an aggressive launch with their first driverless trucks hitting the road by the end of 2024 you heard that right by the end of 2024 they expect to see their first driverless trucks actually hitting the road okay now what's interesting is that they're aiming for an aggressive launch with uh with with the 2024 but their vision is even more ambitious than that because they're projecting to have thousands of self-driving trucks fully autonomous operating by 2026 okay yeah, uh, it's it's a sim it's it's a great simulator. It's a fantastic video game. If you have a laptop in the truck that's got a good video card it, and and get yourself a nice controller, man, it, so fun. They did such a great job. Full simulator with all the buttons breaking and uh, everything, everything in there. You, I I play it in a simplified mode because it's way too complicated. If you go into the full advanced mode and you play it as if you're a real truck driver. So since I'm not a real truck driver. I'm not playing a real truck driver game. So, yeah. Um, all trucks go over the road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not under it. No, absolutely. So, so kind of getting back to this, guys. Uh, they have a very aggressive, very ambitious plans. They're projecting, uh, they're projecting thousands of self-driving trucks by 2026. Trucks by the end of this year will be on the road. And there are several, several partnerships that I've just mentioned earlier. Partnerships are paving the way from tech giants to automakers where you have collaboration uh, between these fast-paced industry leaders, Aurora has teamed up with uh, Continental. Many of you guys know Continental. They produce a lot of the very uh, replacement OEM parts for many of the manufacturers of the U.S. Uh, trucks out there, as well as European, I believe. It's a major automotive parts supplier. Uh, they're going to be manufacturing a self-driving hardware that will be the brains of the operation. Now, additionally, Volvo and Peterbilt are, on, are also on board to build an actual truck. So that combination is moving forward. They're going to ensure compatibility and smooth integration with the technology. So uh, a partnership of tech companies, as well as builders, as well as parts manufacturers coming together. Now, trucking goes big business in terms of potential for increased profitability. Now, I, I take this with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a very dangerous game that we're playing. I think there's going to be a lot more questions in terms of, uh, of legality. You know, who do you, uh, who's at fault? The manufacturer, the computer, uh, who's at fault in case of an accident? What if something actually happens? So legally speaking, who do you sue? Right, and so that's what it comes down to, especially in the trucking industry, running big trucks down the road at high speeds, and uh, they can cause a lot of damage if there's an accident, you know, God forbid. But those things do happen. So the question is going to be: There's no driver in there. Whose fault is it? Uh, do you know what does the insurance cover? How will coverage for insurance actually work in, in these types of situations? Right. So there is going to be a lot of that. But what's interesting is it isn't even all about the cool tech. It's about the bottom line. Aurora's projections suggest that self-driving trucks could be significantly more profitable than traditional ones. They estimate higher revenue due to increased efficiency. So think longer hours on a road because, you know, trucks, computers don't need a break. They don't need to use the facilities. They don't need a shower or food. Um, and uh, potentially lower costs from, uh, from factors like optimized fuel usage and reduced accidents. So we'll have to see about reduced accidents, but I am pretty excited about the platooning aspect of having like four or five trucks going behind each other and they're able to communicate. So if one truck hits a pothole, you can instantly communicate to all the rest of the trucks using the neural network, if you will, that there is a pothole in this specific spot, and then they can kind of avoid that, right? Plus a lot of fuel economy because they can be platooning one behind the, the other, and the trucks that are in the middle and going towards the back are going to get better fuel economy versus a truck that's uh, breaking through with headwinds and things like that. So I can see how that can be uh, helpful with optimized fuel uh, usage and efficiency. Now, OEMs and tech firms join forces, the new era of choice for truckers. And this is, again, coming back to the concept of, uh, of, of different companies coming together. So the landscape is shifting with major truck manufacturers like Trayton, T-R-A-T-O-N. So think Scania, European trucks. Uh, I think they're called MAN or M-A-N. And then Navistar also builds uh, both in the U.S. as well as Europe. And they're strategically partnering with tech companies companies uh, like Plus, it's I, I think they got rebranded and renamed, but I may be wrong here, but a company called Plus, and they're going to be bringing self-driving tech to their vehicles. Now, this trend suggests that in the future, truckers might have the option to choose between uh, different self-driving systems offered by various 
tech providers all integrated seamlessly into their trucks. So you could have kind of semi-autonomous, fully autonomous, different types of additional tech. So as far as a look ahead, they're saying to embrace the change and, and, and stay informed. And, and, and the truth is that we're not going to be the ones who are going to put a stop to this. It's going to just have to go the way that it is once they have, you know, major accidents, problems, trucks. I mean, we've seen the videos in San Francisco, Waymo trucks driving into <laughs> into uh, construction zones and, you know, having to have construction workers lift up the back of the car like a like a little child and have them run somewhere else because these computers they they the technology simply isn't there but the development of technology and uh you know with the resurgence of ai and all the investment that's going into there i think that the the software development aspect of this and the improvement of all this is going to get uh moving very very quickly um so there's that trucks under electric wires more efficient on highway versus diesel under electric wires are more efficient. So, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, trucks, uh, electric trucks are, are, are by far a lot more efficient than if you were looking at like diesel powered semi trucks. But my concern and my question is that how do we charge them? And uh, they, they seem to not be getting the same type of range that's advertised. That's why they're estimates. We don't have the infrastructure. Uh, we don't have the high speed infrastructure for the giant batteries in the semi trucks. And, uh, you, you know, the, the, the overall cost to produce, the cost, the environmental cost, all those things are in question. Uh, then what do we do when the batteries go, you know, die out and you have to get them replaced? Uh, I mean, it takes like 10 million years for those things to break down. So they're not biodegradable. Then that's even more damaging to the environment. So the very environment that we're trying to save is going to have a problem. See, the way I look at it is like that one Canadian company called, uh, they do forestry stuff. What are they called? Emerson? Uh, or, um, no, it wasn't Emerson. It was uh, Nicole. No, Nicola was the, the hydrogen company with uh, with Travis or what was it? Trevor Trevor uh, running Nicola. So there's another company out of Canada and they did a really cool truck where the, there's a diesel motor that, charges the battery and a battery is what drives the truck and it can get a ton of OTR miles. They can get a lot of torque. They can do forestry work. And, uh, you know, and even then the owner of that company, uh, I think they're called, um, I swear it's Emerson. No, it wasn't. It was, uh, it's another name of the company. You guys can look them up. Ton of view, views on videos. They have their own custom trucks that they've built. And what's, what's super interesting is that even the owner of that company says like, look, our trucks aren't even designed for OTR work. We can't really get you there. Uh, yeah, so so Ed, uh, the, the dispatch fee for your own authority is 7%. For the leasing side, it really varies. It's not necessarily 12%. It really varies depending on the type of uh, setup that you end up doing with uh, with the leasing company because you might have your own plates. You can bring those in. You don't have to get them through us. That'll lower your cost. You can have uh, you know, your own trailer. There are several different things that will actually bring down the costs. Now, we can work with you if you don't have plates. If you don't have a trailer, we can still get you all those things, but things just get more expensive. Now, the good news is, is that the price and the cost costs that we get, we just pass them on to you. The problem is that since we go through um, Illinois, Illinois is like the second most expensive uh, state for IRP cap cards after California. So therefore, we get them for a high price and, and that gets, and gets passed on to you guys. And, you know, you end up, uh, you're way better off just getting your own place. And then plus, here's the other thing. I'm not saying things don't work out, but if they didn't work out, you wouldn't have to have prepaid IRP cards and place that they're not going to refund you on. Um, you would just lose that money. This way, you could just take your place with you and go elsewhere. Open up your own MC authority and transfer it over. Go to another company and bring the, your plates with you. So uh, a lot better to get your own plates. But there are definitely a few different things that you can do to lower the cost. So, so absolutely. Um, Trucks will be more like locomotives. Yeah, I think uh, trucks will definitely be a lot more like locomotives. Uh, they may have their own roads. They may have their own separate, you know, highway lanes and things like that. Diesel power generators that will give you the best of both worlds. Exactly. And that's what that company did. Um, I'll have to remember the name of the company. I'm sure it'll come to me. Um, interstate highways. Uh, now the way station is too much for the in the market. Yes, absolutely. Same, uh, same as on the Autobahn. Exactly. Uh, definitely. Set up. Yeah, the infrastructure is way behind. I mean, that's why we're dumping so much money into the infrastructure to do this. But the problem is that the cost of setting up these chargers, the cost of infrastructure, and at the end of the day, we have to burn fossil fuels in order to create the charge. So I'm not sure of where we're actually saving. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and, and the European countries, they're much smaller. So their trucks are built different. They have additional axles usually. They do carry quite a bit more weight, but they're crossing... Uh, you know, it's just a stone's throw away and you might be in a different country. So they're not as big as the United States and all the little countries there that have different regulations. It's actually very, very difficult to become a truck driver in Europe and uh, a lot of regulations. There there are some laws there that I've talked to. I met some guys who, uh, I think the, uh, there was a gentleman that I met in in Las Vegas several years ago. I stopped by at a bar for a, for a quick drink and I started talking to him. And turned out to be he was a truck driver in the UK, and he kind of gave me some information that I would have never known had I not shared a, a beer with a truck driver from the United Kingdom. So it was definitely something, yeah. And that's one of the things that he had talked about. He also talked about, like, if you get a blown tire, what you have to do and, and how different that was from the United States. We have a lot more freedom here, let me tell you that. We have a lot more freedom in how we can go about doing business. So, so there is that. But basically, yeah, that future driving... Uh, self-driving trucks, they, they seem futuristic. Uh, the arrival's on the horizon. It has the potential to significantly disrupt the trucking industry. Uh, you know, these advancements could lead to more efficient, cost-effective, potentially safer trucking industry. But again, we that's something that we shall have to uh, see. And, uh, you know, one other thing that I that I forgot to touch uh, touch on is, is, is the utilization of these trucks. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to have... If you're going to have automated equipment, you can pretty much double down on your productivity because the truth of the matter is you're, you're just going to have a lot more freight moving without having to worry about, you know, a truck driver got sick or got pulled over or he fell asleep or he's complaining or he needs to reset his hours. You're just going to have automated trucks that are going to be just moving freight left and right and probably going to have uh, guys behind, you know, large computer screens handling, you know, 10, 12 trucks at a time, getting them off the freeway load you know backing them up into the dock then switch over to the other truck and that's probably how it's going to go at least at the very beginning so that's what we're kind of expecting so yeah absolutely well another reminder guys if you get a chance if you haven't done so please hit the like button uh and and you know let us know if there are any questions go ahead and uh, you know uh give us a call if it's something that you want to do it's super easy to get started with us if you are a dispatch service uh you know just excuse me if you're a carrier and you need a dispatch service you just click this button here go to aftdispatch.com click the learn more button first name mc number email address and a phone we'll get in touch with you same thing with least on owner operators just easier less things first name email and phone we'll get in touch with you dispatch you'll talk with me or alex uh and and on their leasing you'll uh you'll either talk with me or alex but then we'll get you over to uh, Kevin, and he can get you all the information, go into detail, give you some advice, uh, contrast and compare, and even get you some driver settlements reports. So you can take a look at some of the uh, real drivers and what they've been doing recently with proper equipment, you know, with the type of equipment you're trying to run. That way you can look at it as apples to apples. But the first thing starts here. Either call or text us at 801-448-6363 or just fill out uh, any one of these forms on our uh, on our homepage at aftdispatch.com. So so there's that um and here's the other thing that finally that i wanted to cover with you guys as well um what do you think of uh scania i like both i mean to me they're beautiful trucks um you know a few years back i i found myself on vacation out in ukraine and we were going through the country and so we made some stops and truck stops and we saw a lot of these trucks and um uh, since uh, you know I, I speak a common language, I was able to, and my, my brother was with me there, and he's a truck driver, and so he was super interested. And you know, we both approached the truck drivers out there. They were you know relaxing, parked, eating some food, drinking some coffee. They let them get in there. They they showed us their their trucks. They're actually pretty cool. The the way that the the condo is set up inside is very different from our trucks, and I would say in many ways. Uh, even better, they're definitely, they, they seem to be smaller, but at the same time more spacious. They're, they're designed a little bit better, it seems that way. Sorry, I'm just looking through the comments. Well, the next thing, <coughs> pardon me, guys. So the next thing I wanted to cover with you guys is this right here. Now, I have written up I, I thought I had written up, but what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this one right here because I think this is this is... This is enough right here. This comes up a lot, but I'm going to start at the very bottom because I think it's super, super important to go through this legal disclaimer. I want to make sure I read this to you guys because I don't want anybody saying that, hey, that's financial advice or business advice or any sort of uh, legal advice. So important note, the information provided on this website, in this live cast, all this other stuff is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal, financial, professional advice. 
we AFT Dispatch, A2C Logistics, all our affiliates, all our contributors, everyone, they're not engaged in rendering legal, financial, professional advice, uh, professional services. Any reliance on the information presented here is at your own risk. Sorry, guys. Hey, Alex, welcome in, man. Thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, so, so definitely a consultation is, uh, is recommended. Talk to your guys. I always tell you, taxes, talk to your CPA, talk, talk to your tax professional, talk to your bookkeeper, whatever it might be. Talk to those folks. Uh, legal questions, talk to an attorney, talk to a paralegal, talk to at least someone who's, uh, you know, who's familiar with that part and uh, take everything with a grain of salt, do your research, do all those things. So, you know, make sure. So, so again, uh, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. I think it's super, you know, self-explanatory. But this is what I would like to, uh, to kind of jump in. A lot of you guys are asking, uh, or a lot of you guys will say, I got my LLC opened up. Guys, you know it's super easy to open up a company. LLCs are super easy. You can go to like uh, Zoom file or whatever those companies are called. You can go there and, uh, and, and and they'll take care of that for you for a couple hundred bucks or, uh, you know, whatever whatever the going cost is nowadays. Um, and, 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 and so, but uh, still to this day, I see so many of you guys as sole proprietors. You have no idea how many W9s I'm seeing where you guys are sole proprietors. Breaks my heart, guys. Breaks my heart. So why why is that? We're gonna go through the main ones, and then there's one more that I'm gonna cover. That that that's the one you should really be asking questions about. Okay. So sole proprietorship, the simplest path. Wait, way too many of you guys are doing sole proprietorships for your trucking company. Way too many of you guys. Way too much liability in the trucking industry to do sole proprietorship. All right. As a sole proprietor, perhaps the most straightforward form of business ownership characterized by a single individual who owns and operates the business. Okay, simple as that. As the sole owner, you have complete control over decision making and operations, making an attractive option for many trucking entrepreneurs, especially those starting small scale operations. All right. Um, Advantages, super easy setup, right? Establishing a sole proprietorship involves minimal paperwork and legal formalities, making a hassle-free option for new ventures. And guess why? Guess why people are doing that? Because it's the easiest thing to do. Hey, I'm a sole proprietor. You don't have to do anything, right? Direct control. As a sole proprietor, you gain full control over business operations, allowing for quick decision making and flexibility in adapting to market changes. Here's the thing, guys. If you had another type of uh, organization, LLC, Corps, C Corps, S Corps, uh, LLPs, partnerships, whatever might be the case, you still have full control over your business. You still have the same flexibility and everything. You just don't have the liability. So there's that. Uh, so we'll skip that. I mean, one thing that's super important is this, okay, the, the disadvantages. Very quickly, unlimited liability. Super, super important. One of the most significant drawbacks is that as an owner, as a sole proprietor, uh, you're, you're assuming unlimited personal liability for the business's debts and obligations. In the event of legal action or financial distress, personal assets, including savings and property, are at risk. So be aware of that. You guys know truckers have a giant giant target sign on our back. Everybody knows that trucking companies have large insurance policies. That's why anytime you get a look into any sort of fender bender, they go after attorneys and try to sue you for everything you've got. That's why they do that. That's why there's so many, so many laws trying to be written about increasing insurance policies, increasing minimum requirements and premiums, which would follow for higher coverages. Uh, we have these astronomical lawsuits with hundreds of millions of dollars in payouts and things like that. And that puts companies out of business. So if your company is going to be going out of business, at least make sure that's the company, not you personally. And so you don't end up on the street, right? So, um, so, and then there's also the limited fundraising potential, very, very difficult with the sole proprietorship to be able to gain, uh, gain, uh, for example, uh, virtual, uh, what are they called? Uh, VCs, uh, venture capitalists, or just fund, uh, funding from banks, things like that's very difficult. Next one's going to be partnership. Generally, I don't see a lot of those um, because you don't really need a partnership. You could you could do a different type of an organization, but basically you're going to have shared responsibilities, uh, you know, partnership, distribute management duties and decision making among multiple individuals um, with multiple partners contributing funds and resources. Partnerships may have greater access to capital compared to sole proprietorships facilitating business growth and expansion. Now, the, the disadvantages are going to be, again, your unlimited liability for general partners. In general partnerships, all partners assume unlimited personal liability for the business debts and obligations, placing their Personal, uh, personal assets at risk. So this is the same thing, basically, as a sole proprietor, but this, uh, but as a partnership. So we'll skip that. Now the next one, the most common in trucking, 
is going to be your LLC, your limited liability company. So this is your balance of protection and flexibility. Now, why why do so so I'll, let me pull back a little bit. So every company I've ever ran, any company I've ever incorporated, even the ones that I've shut down, closed down, and didn't work out or whatnot, were always corporations. Now, why did I do that? And uh, there's another portion. There's C-Corps and there's S-Corps, right? And we'll cover all that. But why I did that is because uh, of certain understandings that I had and the discussions with uh, legal professionals as well, uh, as well as financial professionals and like CPA tax guys. And then one day my CPA actually explained that, hey, listen, you could actually do uh, LLCs. The reason that so many companies were always going for corps, corporations and getting incorporated was because there wasn't enough uh, cases in, like, in, in, in lawsuits and things like that uh, in order for, uh, for the governing bodies or the judges to be able to uh, make the proper decisions. But because years have gone by and there's been enough lawsuits and things like that on the books nowadays you could run an llc and uh you know and, and still be just as protected as a corporation so for ease of administration for ease of operations for ease of running a company llc is going to be a great choice for you guys but i still stay away now certain uh, industries like the real estate industries, they like to encapsulate each property or each project into its own separate entity. And it's a whole lot easier as an, uh, as a real estate investor to, uh, that has, let's say like, let's say you have like 10 properties, uh, to manage an LLC versus a corporation of any sort. And we'll cover that. So jumping in an LLC, a limited liability company combines the benefits of a corporation with the operational flexibility of a partnership or sole proprietorship. LLCs offer limited liability protection, shielding owners from personal liability for business debts and legal actions while allowing for pass-through taxation where profits and losses flow through the owner's personal tax returns. All right, so some of the advantages are your limited liabilities. LLC owners, known as members, Enjoy limited personal liability, protecting your personal assets from business-related liabilities and lawsuits. So as a minimum, you want to have that. What is pass-through taxation? Unlike corporations, and in this case, they're referring to C-Corps, LLCs are not subject to double taxation. Profits and losses are reported on the owner's individual tax returns, avoiding taxation on both the corporate and personal levels. Many of you guys have certainly heard uh, double taxation, things like that. You've certainly you know, heard people talk about that, but a lot of times when you ask those people what that actually means, crickets, they don't know what they're talking about. They just like to you know, scream things out. But despite its benefits, LLCs have certain drawbacks. So what are we talking about here? Complexity and setup, okay? Establishing an LLC involves more paperwork and formalities compared to sole proprietorships and partnerships requiring the files, uh, filing of articles of organization and adherence to state-specific regulations. Here's another problem that I, I need to add to this list. LLCs uh, are very, very difficult because LLCs do not create shares. Corporations do. So you, if you're planning on expanding your company, becoming a conglomerate, a larger firm, you're better off with a corporation than an LLC, but it's a whole lot easier to administer corporate, uh, an LLC versus uh, a corp, a C corp or an S corp. Speaking of that, let's jump into the corporation. So corporations, formal structure, enhanced protection. Now there's a lot more that can be written about this than I did, but again, I didn't print it out and we'll just talk about it verbally. So a corporation is a separate legal entity from its owners, very different offering the highest level of personal asset protection and formal structure among the business entities. Corporations issue shares of stock to shareholders. That's the difference. Now, these shareholders who then elect the board of directors to oversee corporate affairs and major decisions, okay? Advantages of a corporation include limited liability, just like before. Shareholders enjoy limited personal liability, protecting their personal assets from business debts, lawsuits, and legal claims against the corporation. And then there's also easier access to capital. It's the only one that gives you this opportunity. Corporations have the ability to issue stock and attract investors, providing a stable source of capital for business expansion and investment. So for example, if I wanted to give you a cut of the company and I said, look, give me $500,000 and I'll give you, uh, you know, 5% of the company. I can do that by issuing 5% of the company's common stock to you. Or if you've issued preferred stock, you can issue that. There are differences there. I'm not going to cover that today, but in the future we will. Uh, however, you couldn't do either one of those things with an LLC. However, corporations also face certain challenges. So here's your double taxation. 
Corporations are subject to double taxation where corporate profits are taxed at the corporate level and dividends distributed to shareholders are taxed again on their individual tax returns on your 1040, 1040 easy, whatever might be the case. That's where you're going to see that. So those are for distributions. All right. There's also complexity and expense. Establishing and maintaining a corporation requires compliance with extensive legal and regulatory requirements, including the filing of articles of incorporation, regular board meetings, and financial reporting. You actually have to keep a log and have minutes and you have to have a board of directors so you have to list yourself or a partner or whoever's in there as part of it in order to have the proper structure and actually keep track of the minutes spent that have to be submitted and kept track of uh, for legal and uh, you know business reasons so that's something that you don't have to deal with um, you know with other companies now the 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 bonus here is this the s corporation now i forget the document you have to file maybe i, I wrote it here I guess I didn't, but uh, there, there's a do there's a document with the IRS you can file where you, it's an election for S corporation, and they generally will uh, as long as you comply and you fulfill the requirements, will get the S corporation election. So it's the tax advantages and flexibility. So when you open a corp, when you incorporate, that automatically becomes a C corp, and what you're trying to do is switch over to an S corp. Now an S corp has a limitation of uh, I believe it's a five million dollar. Uh, maximum income, gross income that you can make. I believe it's five million, but that you know, don't quote me on that. Might have changed. So, an S corporation, also known as an S corp, is a variation of traditional corporation that offers specific tax benefits while remaining, while retaining some of the advantages of a corporation. So, to qualify as an S corp, the business must meet certain IRS requirements, including having a limited number of shareholders and only specific types of shareholders, individuals certain trusts and the states now the advantage of an s corp is you get your pass-through taxation that's similar to llc's all right so L similar to llc's s corporations benefit from pass-through taxation this means corporate profits and losses pass through uh directly to the shareholders personal tax returns avoiding double taxation unlike your traditional c corps okay so there's that benefit there you have your limited liability, so just like traditional corporations, your C-Corps, as corporations offer limited liability protection shareholders, safeguarding you from all the other issues and lawsuits that could potentially hinder your business. And also potentially lower tax rates in comparison to your C-Corporation. So depending on the individual shareholder's tax situation, S-Corporations can offer lower overall tax rates compared to traditional corporations, especially for businesses with high profits and low employee salaries, because you got to remember, there is a, a self-employment tax of 15.3% that you can actually avoid covering. So keeping 15.3% of that. However, in time, you're going to have to start contributing into that fund to your state and federal funds for unemployment and things like that, as well as Social Security, Medicare, and all those things. And that's where that comes in. So you could actually help yourself establish yourself in initial years, and then basically pivot and update your structure, not update your structure, but actually work with your CPA in order to start actually making those deposits in order to stay legal. And you will still retain the tax advantages. So here are the things that the disadvantages of an S corporation, an S corp, is this qualifying for and maintaining S corporation status requires adherence to specific IRS regulations, including limitations on a number and types of shareholders. This can add complexity compared to other structures. So you will actually have to have someone, you don't have to, but you would be highly recommend to have someone who's going to keep track of all these things, your minutes and all the meetings and things like that. Now, the, here's the tax, tax, uh, tax part potential for self employment taxes. Unlike traditional corporations, S corporation shareholders, who are only uh, uh, who are also employees, because remember you could be the owner of the company, but also consider an employee as the truck driver or the employee of the company. You may be subject to self-employment taxes on uh, your share of the company's profits and potentially higher costs because establishing and maintaining an S corporation can involve higher filing fees and legal costs compared to simpler structures like sole proprietorships. Totally worth the money, but again, not legal financial advice or anything like that. So choosing between a corporation and S corp, the decision between a traditional corporation and S corporation depends on various factors, including your tax situation, growth goals, risk tolerance, and of course, consulting a tax profession can help you determine the most suitable structure for your business. So that's where we're at, right? So you have to make those informed decisions, decide on what you need, because not, not, you know, the, the no, no one size fits all solutions uh, here. So you definitely consult with legal and financial professionals, get that done. But it's going to come down to what your goals are, right? So evaluate your short term objectives, long term goals uh, for your company, 
uh, as, as, as your growth potential, scalability, what is it that you want to achieve? You know, are you looking to run a large company? Are you looking to lease on owner operators? Are you looking on to have a bunch of different pieces of equipment? Uh, you know, maybe some uh, equipment variability from vans, reefers and flatbeds, maybe some specialized. Do you want to have leased on owner operators? Do you have to have a bunch of trucking um, uh, company drivers that you want to have? Do you want a mixed bag? Do you want to provide uh, different types of services? Uh, all of that will tell you what is going to be the best business structure. And there's a lot of really good information. If once you've read through all that and watched all the videos and it still doesn't make sense, get in touch with a professional and they'll get you guys taken care of. And then, of course, a little plug for our service, which I'm not going to get in on that. Uh, we can, you know, we can cover that. There's, uh, there's our website there. So, guys, I hope that that kind of helps uh, answer some of those questions. Uh, you know, I, I think this has been a pretty informative. Any any questions that you guys might have, I would certainly would love to uh, to discuss those with you guys. Um, you know, definitely consider the the business structure, what your goals are, what do you plan on doing? Do you want to have one truck? You're forever going to be the driver on that truck. That's completely fine. You don't plan to have a second one. Just one trailer, a very simple setup. Man, go with the easy setup. Get yourself, make sure you're, you got the protections, make sure you got all the guys working on your taxes, keeping track of all your expenses, educating you, and doing some tax planning if you're going to be doing very, very well. If the market starts picking up, uh, you know, that's going to be an opportunity for you guys to meet with your tax professional on a quarterly basis or they should be getting in touch with you when they're actively reviewing your finances and telling you about things are looking good, this might be a time, you know, to buy another piece of equipment. Hey, you're running out of depreciation. We depreci fully depreciated your truck last year. We only have one more year of uh, a portion of depreciation left over on your trailer. You're going to have a very big tax bill, et cetera, et cetera, because they're keeping track of these things on a quarterly basis. 99% of you guys are not benefiting from that. And that's really unfortunate because it could save you a ton of money. It could give you a lot more leverage. It will get, it could expand your fleet. It can really get you a lot more assets and a lot more depreciation and reduced costs, uh, or as, at least reduced taxation, uh, where you might find yourself in exactly the same boat, but having to pay more money and not have the additional equipment, all those things. And these are things that build up over time. You know, that's the reason why you have some of these companies that might have, you know, a thousand trucks and 15,000 trailers. You know, they might be renting them, they're using them in depreciation. One of the trailers that we bought many, many years ago from a local company out here in Salt Lake was uh, in fantastic shape. It was, uh, you know, it was just a great tra trailer. We picked it up as a reefer. And uh, the only reason they sold it to us is because the owner was doing really well. And that was one of the pieces of equipment that he had fully depreciated and he just wanted to get rid of it. So he get us, got us a deal and that got us another five years of depreciation on that truck as we went under standard uh, standard time frames for the depreciation schedule. So, and that's another thing you can do. Uh, you know, as of I believe two years ago, you have the opportunity to actually deduct the full cost and the de fully depreciate uh, the uh, fully depreciate the, uh, the, 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 the full cost, uh, basically, but then you don't have that depreciation. So super, super important to have that CPA is going to look at this and say, you know what, this is a good idea. This is a bad idea. This is what you want to do. Um, so so text, um, do I have CPA companies to recommend? So there was a company, I've worked with them for about 10 years. Uh, the CPA that I worked with, he actually left the company and started working independently. He, he got a full-time job in the company, but he takes care of us because we've been with them for a long time. Now, lately, I think he's getting too busy because I haven't been able to get a hold of him. And that's a very, very uh, bad sign. So you want to make sure that you have your CPA's cell phone number, that they're actually answering your calls and texts, that they're getting in touch with you, that they're actively monitoring these things, that they have all the logins and passwords and accounts set up with uh, with SUDA, FUDA, so your state unemployment and your federal unemployment, with your deposit accounts with the state, with the uh, tax commission, with all the deposit, just everything that needs to be handled, they got that. And they also have access to some form of an income statement that they can look at that gets updated so that they can actually make those decisions based on a quarterly basis. Because otherwise, they're going to have to meet with you annually and then say, well, what we should have done last year is this, 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 and that. But hey, it's too late now. But if you give them that access, they're going to actually be able to meet with you four times a year and really take advantage. So I did work with a company. Um, let me see if I can show you. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to like market these guys or anything like that, but um, let's see. 
trucking CV. Uh, it was Sandy. So these are the guys that I've worked with. Let me see where they are. I don't know why they're not showing up on the list, but I will find them. Right there. So they used to be at the top. Independent Trucking Accounting Service. Uh, where's their address? They used to have an address, guys. They're right there. So, so they're right off, uh, right off the freeway on, on 90th, and you just go up from State Street, you, go, you cross State, and then you, you get to these guys. So that's probably like 53 East and 90th. Fantastic guys. They actually specialize in trucking. Uh, for a while, when we were working, they actually opened up a trucking company. They've been around for a long time, over 10 years in business now. Uh, so they're, they're a very good company, a really good choice um, in that sense. Oh, I guess I was on the wrong screen. You guys couldn't see that. Let me... I apologize. Let's do that. Let's go back. Let's, let's go back. So these are the guys that I'm referring to. So now you guys can see. So they're called Independent Trucking uh, Truckers Accounting Service. They've been good to us. They're very good uh, people, very established, very, uh, very well known, and they specialize in trucking. There's a phone number, 801-601-8666. Good people right off the freeway, very accessible. And uh, one of the guys, that, like I said, I work with, he's been with them for a long time and we just work one-on-one -on -one, uh, with all the businesses uh, that I run. So he's taking care of me, but um, uh, we are gonna have to talk very, very soon because he has fallen behind on our uh, tax filings and, and the like. So. So yeah, there you have it, guys. So yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely say look for for a good one. Uh, you know, definitely look at the reviews, uh, ask specific questions, bring in your documents. Maybe they're even willing to review your past taxes and be able to make um, you know edits and changes and updates, and maybe that'll save you some money um, moving forward, making some of those audits, some of those changes. So. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys, but I would definitely, I mean, the one thing you want to do is want to make sure your taxes are taken care of. You want to make sure your uh, gross income side is taken care of. So that's, you know, dispatch, make sure your operating costs are taken care of. So make sure that you're, you got the best deal on insurance, your taxes, that you're handling uh, your general uh, variable costs, keeping your fuel down, things like that. So independent truckers accounting service. And yeah, that's the guys right there. Uh, fantastic company. Uh, you know, really, really good guys. So I, I would give them a call. I mean, they're here in Utah. And, uh, you know, there's other really good companies out there, but just got to be super careful. Like we had a company uh, that that a lot of my friends were working with and I refused uh, and only because they, they, maybe she did a great job and everything, but she kept referring to herself as a CPA and I know that she was just a bookie, but you can't do that. You have to have respect for that profession. A, you have to have only, you can only have certain types of financial degrees to even qualify for that. You have to have additional education. You have to have uh, X amount of hours for certification for that. You have to have a master's degree in finance in order to get into that. I don't believe you can even sit for that with uh, the bachelor's. Then you have to pass, uh, pass an all-income passing CPA exam, which is very difficult and has a very low uh, passing, uh, not score, but no amount of people that actually pass it. You have to have the right type of mindset. You have to be, you have to be the right guy for that kind of stuff. So it, it's really a disservice to say, hey, I'm a bookie that you can hire for 20 bucks an hour and then call yourself a CPA and then charge, you know, two grand for a tax return. Not cool. Not cool. So I, I don't want to do that. Plus, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, and I know them, they will make you sign a piece of paper that says that you're aware that they're not actually a CPA and that they don't take any liability and they're, they're only taking the information that you're giving to them and that, you know, all questions should go to you. Now, generally speaking, that's going to be the case as is, but the chances that a CPA is going to make those screw ups and he's going to actually sign the documents and say that they are the preparer and do, they're, they're going to double check, triple check everything. Even the CPAs that use uh, help helpers, they're going to still uh, review the final uh, the final filings before they do that. And they're going to review it with you because they need your signature anyway. So they're going to kind of explain to you, but you don't, so you don't, don't cheap out on your dispatcher. Don't cheap out on your CPAs. And certainly, uh, you know, don't cheap out on some of the other things like your insurance. I, I wanted to change insurance companies once got a better deal, blah, blah, blah. Started comparing apples to apples. The guys uh, gave me a 500 mile radius. Well, we have an unlimited policy. So once that was brought into 
onto the surface said, okay, listen, let's do apples to apples. Give me that. Give me the full, uh, full unlimited miles. They did that. Guess what? His rate was higher. But they know that. They're just hoping you won't notice that because eventually either, A, you won't notice and something's going to happen and the insurance company won't cover you. And, then you're, and what are they going to say? We're so sorry. I thought that's what you wanted. I apologize. I'm a misunderstanding, but you're still screwed right? Or something else will happen where you're going to find out and you're already left your insurance company. and you're going to say, hey, listen, I noticed it's a 500 mile radius. Can you increase it? And then you're going to go and pay the difference and you're still going to end up overpaying. So if you have a good insurance person, stick with them. If you got a good fuel card, if you got, uh, you know, good people in industry, stick with them. If you got a good dispatchers, you know, helping you out, stick with them. If you, you know, if you got all those other CPA tax professionals, stick with them. Uh, when I started dispatch, um, you know, I, I knew what I wanted, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm not a lawyer. So I went to a lawyer. Yeah, you pay them, you, you revisit this and that. But guess what? That contract has saved me many, many times. It's certainly uh, paid, paid for itself many times over. So I highly, highly recommend uh, making sure that all those services are utilized. So thank you guys so much. I think we're going to make a, well, I guess not a shorter show, slightly shorter show. So uh, thank you, Tex, again, for, for the wonderful phone call. Thank you for all the heads up and everything. Guys, if you uh, joined our video a little bit later uh, into the evening, uh, in, into the show, make sure to rewind, watch it from the beginning. Towards the beginning of the show, Tex Williams called in as one of our customers. Fantastic uh, stuff that he shared with you guys. He spent a really good amount of time on the phone. And Tex, thank you so much. I really wish you a very, very good, profitable next week. Once your hours reset and everything, get this thing taken care of and uh, hopefully enjoy Miami or wherever you're going to be diving. So definitely thank you so much for stopping by and the rest of you guys, thank you very, very much. Uh, for now, I guess I'll just, uh, as we say, switch over to camera. Uh, Tex is saying, also, no, if you're hauling hazmat, you need hazmat insurance, and Progressive does not cover this. So that's a very good point. So if you want to do full truck loads, you're going to have to have uh, full hazmat insurance, um, you know, with, with small partials under, what is it, 5,000 pounds or something like that. Uh, you, you need the, the different types of coverages and there are di different allowances and there are different cards that you can put on the side of the trailer and also depends on the type of hazmat you're hauling and uh, whether or not it's going to require like tanker endorsements and things like that. Uh, another issue with Progressive, for example, is... Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Text. Thank you so much, man. And the other thing is, that, uh, for example, in California, there was a law passed where uh, where a lot of companies started leaving, insurance companies. So Progressive Commercial, being one of the leaders in insurance groups uh, for new carriers, you know, they were basically setting rates. And then what Progressive did is said, hey, we're not going to we're not going to sign up new MCs anymore because it was creating too much. Uh, risk for them as an insurance company, too much liability, so they weren't doing that. On the other hand, they would only allow you to do, for example, uh, Western 11 plus Texas or a 500 mile radius or even worse, a 300 mile radius. So effectively, it was limiting your range so much and truckers were still going out there and doing deliveries and just being extra careful, but God forbid something would happen. Insurance companies just jump on and say, hey, you have broken your contractual obligation. We have no need to, uh, we have no reason to actually cover you. Now, if you talk to an insurance agent, they're going to say, well, they allow it once or twice. Come on, guys. Really? You, you crash a truck, you do, let's say, $80,000 worth of uh, freight uh, in, the, in the trailer. Your truck is bad. Uh, your trailer is bad, everything's destroyed, there's medical issues, damage to the roads, maybe someone else was involved, maybe there's another car, another people, other people, families, things like that. That's millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of potential damages. And all of a sudden, the insurance company is going to come in and say, well, we know you screwed up, but it was just this one time, so we'll take care of it from here. Never going to happen. They're going to take advantage of this. They're going to, uh, they're going to count their blessings. They're going to say, wow, we really, you know, uh, really saved the day on this one. We're not going to have to cover this guy. But you've paid your uh, your premium, so things like that. Nelson, uh, thank you so much, man. Uh, Nelson, I, I we've been talking a lot with the guys about you. Thank you for having That's another, yet another guy with a great attitude. And Nelson, I got to tell you something. We were just talking about this, that you're one of the one of the rare few guys who is coachable, who's teachable, who's understanding. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, you're in a tough spot right now, but they'll get you through it, man. They will get you to, uh, through it. So thank you so much for being an awesome customer. Same for Tex and everybody else in the, in the, in the chat here. Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your uh, Sunday. Enjoy the day. The warmer weather's here. And I'm going to switch over the camera and 
and uh, hit the like button. And uh, Nelson saying, every day I learn more and more in the industry. Absolutely, man. It never ends. 12 years later, in 10 days, I'll be 12 years in business. And uh, I'm still learning new stuff all the time. So it, it never ends. It's definitely a very, you know, it's a wild industry. There's a lot that can be said about that. But at the end of the day, the more you know, uh, you know, the more you're going to be able to earn and make money and keep yourself out of trouble. So thank you guys very, very much. I don't have an outro song, but what we'll do is... Uh, We'll switch over and uh, get this thing, get this thing uh, over. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, you guys, and I'll see you.